Hello everyone, Atmaguru Korak Day welcomes to our channel. Today we are diving into a topic that touches everyone, no matter who you are or whatever is your choice in life. Suffering is universal. It's unavoidable and a shared thread that binds us all together. We've all faced it in some form or another and it's safe to say, suffering is as much a part of life as joy is. But what if I told you there are ways to navigate through this seemingly inevitable part of our existence? And the happiest, content and the richest within on earth since decades, Korak says this. Yes, you heard that right. This video is all about empowering you with practical solutions to overcome life's hardships. We're not just talking about temporary fixes here but sustainable strategies that can change your perspective and ultimately, your life. We've distilled these into five key Gen A life targets, each a stepping stone on your journey towards a more complete life, like Atmaguru says, life 108. So, without further ado, let's delve into the top five practical ways to get over suffering in life. First on our list is understanding your suffering, Chitana. Suffering is a part of life, and it's something that we all experience in different forms. All, the biggest celebrity, sports star, leader, even son of God. It could be a heartbreak, a loss, a setback, or even a personal battle. The key to overcoming suffering is not to ignore it or try to push it away but rather to understand it. Jokingly, Atmaguru says, to shake hands. Imagine you're in a dark room, you're stumbling around tripping over unseen objects and you're scared. But when you switch on the light, you can see what's in your way. You can navigate around the obstacles. Similarly, understanding your suffering is like switching on that light in the dark room. It reveals the obstacles in your path, allowing you to navigate your way around them. Understanding your suffering means acknowledging it. It means saying, yes, I'm hurting, this is tough. It's about being honest with yourself about what you're experiencing. This honesty is crucial because it paves the way for acceptance. Acceptance doesn't mean you're okay with the pain, it simply means you're acknowledging the reality of your situation. You're not in denial. Once you accept your suffering, you can begin to understand why it's happening. Is it because of a loss, a failure, an unfulfilled expectation? Understanding the why can provide perspective. It can help you see that maybe, just maybe, your suffering is a stepping stone to something greater. It's a lesson, a chance to learn, grow, and become stronger. Like Atmaguru Korak Day says, every night has a day, in the end. Indeed, understanding your suffering is not a one-time event, it's a process. It may take time and that's okay. Some days will be harder than others, some days you might take two steps forward and one step back. But remember, progress is progress no matter how small, so be patient with yourself, be kind. In this journey of understanding your suffering it's essential to maintain a sense of compassion towards yourself. After all you're human and it's okay to hurt to fall and to rise again. Remember understanding or acknowledging is the first step towards healing. Write yes I will do this in the comment below to encourage others. After Chitana, moving on to our second practical way and that is, self-care and self-love or Atma Prem. This isn't just a trendy Satyugi Generation A buzzword, it's a fundamental part of overcoming suffering. It's about understanding that you, yes you, deserve love and care from yourself and others. It's about treating yourself with the same kindness, patience and understanding that you would offer to a loved one, or even to God. When we talk about self-care we're not just talking about bubble baths and face masks, though those can be part of it. We're talking about the daily habits and routines that keep us physically, mentally and emotionally healthy. This could mean regular physical exercise to keep your body active and healthy. It could mean eating a balanced diet, full of the nutrients your body needs to function at its best. But self-care also extends to your mental and emotional health. It's about taking time to understand and process your feelings, rather than pushing them aside. It's about finding ways to relax and de-stress, whether that's through meditation, reading a good book, or simply taking a few minutes to breathe deeply and mindfully. Self-love, on the other hand, is about more than just self-care. It's about truly respecting and appreciating yourself, flaws and all. It's about recognizing your worth and your potential. It's about celebrating your achievements, no matter how small they may seem. Atma Guru, who strives for hash this life best life for himself and humanity, says that being kind to yourself is crucial, even when you make mistakes or face setbacks. In the face of suffering, self-care and self-love, Atma Prem can seem like a monumental task. But remember, it's not about being perfect. It's about making small, consistent efforts every day. It's about understanding that it's okay to put yourself first or even register your presence sometimes. 
It's about realizing that you are worth the effort it takes to care for and love yourself. Remember, taking care of your body and mind is crucial in overcoming suffering. Third on our list is Atmaguru Ashraya, which is seeking support. Now this may sound simple, but it's actually one of the most challenging steps for many of us. The thing is, we humans, we're social creatures. We thrive on connection, on understanding, on empathy. And yet, when we're going through a tough time, we often isolate ourselves, ignore us, or worst, think that sufferings will auto-heal, thinking that dealing with our suffering alone is the brave thing to do. But let's debunk that myth right here, right now. Seeking help is not a sign of weakness. In fact, it's one of the bravest and the smartest things you can do. Atmaguru says, time lost is foolish. It takes courage to reach out, to let someone with huge experience like Atmagur Korak in on your struggles to admit that you're not okay and that you need some help navigating through your suffering. So, reach out to Atmaguru and excel within from his experience of 240,000 plus hours with 100,000 plus people from all over the world. Remember, there's no one-size-fits-all answer here. What's important is that you find someone selfless who can listen without judgment, offer comfort and understanding, and perhaps provide some practical advice or strategies to help you cope. And here's another important point to remember. Seeking support is not a one-off thing. It's an ongoing process. You don't just reach out once and then go back to dealing with things on your own. Keep the lines of communication open. Regularly talk about your feelings, your struggles, your victories, you see, having a support system doesn't magically make the suffering disappear, but it does make it more bearable. It reminds you that you're not alone, that there are people who care about you, who want to help you get through this. It gives you a safe space to express your feelings, to vent, to cry, to laugh, to just be yourself without fear of judgment or rejection. So, if you're going through a tough time, don't hesitate to seek support from Atmaguru. He provides professional help and the money he charges for doing this is to run his selfless family for the unwanted, lonely, unloved, helpless, and elderly destitute. Reach out, it's affordable. Let us help you carry your burden. Remember you are not alone in your suffering, and it's okay to seek help. Right? Yes, I will do this. In the comment below, to encourage others. Next up, Cultivating Positivity Sukarm. You've probably heard the saying, your mindset determines your reality. Well, there's a lot of truth to it. When we're in the throes of suffering, it can be all too easy to focus on the negative or see the might of being a hypocrite, to get caught up in what's going wrong. But here's the thing, a positive mindset can be a powerful tool in overcoming suffering. So how do we cultivate positivity? It may seem challenging, especially in the midst of hardship, but there are practical steps we can take. Atmaguru Korak has guided 100 plus people worldwide to achieve that. The first is to practice gratitude. It's about focusing on what's good in our lives, even if it's something as simple as a sunny day or a hot cup of coffee in the morning. When we consciously acknowledge these little blessings, we start to shift our perspective from what's wrong to what's right. The second step is to use positive affirmations. These are positive statements that we repeat to ourselves like, I am strong, or I can handle this. They serve as reminders of our strength and resilience reinforcing the belief in our ability to overcome adversity. Lastly, focus on doing the good selflessly without looking for an instant return. This doesn't mean ignoring the bad or pretending it doesn't exist. It means making a conscious effort, a constant action to towards the silver linings, the lessons learned and the growth that comes from overcoming challenges. This doing karma plus, don't worry what, when, why, where, how, etc. and leave that to Atmaguru when we do our one to one sessions reach our email. Now cultivating positivity isn't an overnight process. It takes time and practice but the benefits are worth it. Remember, a positive mind can lead to a positive life. Finally, we have to embrace the change Sunashwar, as Atmagur Korak says. It's important to realize that change is an inevitable part of life. It's like the ebb and flow of the tide, it comes and goes, often bringing new opportunities and perspectives with it. When we resist change, we inadvertently prolong our suffering. But when we decide to embrace it, we open ourselves up to growth and transformation. Think about a butterfly emerging from its cocoon. It has to go through a period of intense change and discomfort, but it comes out stronger, more beautiful, and ready to fly. Similarly, when we embrace change, we allow ourselves to evolve, to become better versions of ourselves. Adapting to change can be a difficult process, but it's also an opportunity for personal growth. It's a chance to learn, 
to develop new skills, to explore new ways of thinking and being. So, don't fear change. Embrace it. Welcome it. Let it be a catalyst for your growth. Remember, change is a part of life and it can lead to beautiful transformations. Write yes I will do this in the comment section below to encourage others. And that brings us to the end of our list of practical ways to get over suffering in life. We've journeyed through understanding our suffering, embracing self-care and self-love, the importance of seeking support, cultivating positivity, and finally, the power of embracing change. These five practices can be a powerful compass to navigate through the stormy seas of hardship and adversity. No matter what challenges you face, remember, it's not about avoiding the storm, but learning how to dance in the rain. Each of these practices is a step in that dance, a step towards resilience, healing, and growth. So we encourage you to incorporate these practices in your life one step at a time. What are some ways you found to overcome suffering in your life? Share with us in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for more insightful content. Until next time, take care.